Okay. Let's do this. Hello everyone and welcome to the first crown and comments. Now this is the same format as coffee and comments but some of the comments um, I needed something a little bit stronger. So we're going to this week or this month we're going to do crown and comments. So get your favorite beverage sit down and just get ready because I'm not holding back. I'd like to welcome everyone. This is uh, my first crown and comments and I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel if you have a passion for motorcycles because most of what we're going to talk about today has to do with motorcycles. Now for those of you that are kind of new to the channel, about once a month or so, I will sit down and go through the comments, uh, emails, YouTube comments, Facebook comments, social media, uh, Instagram, it doesn't matter where they come from, and I'll pick out the ones that I want to address. And this month, I felt like uh, it would be a perfect opportunity to do it a little later in the day. I don't normally drink Crown Royal at 7 o'clock in the morning, which is when I normally do these videos. So I decided to do this in the afternoon. And what I'm going to do is just read through some of these comments and then I'll respond to those. And uh, I may go off on a tangent. I don't know. I, I Honestly, I'm just about half pissed off. I don't know why. Um, I didn't even shave to do this. Normally I shave and shower and, and you know, get ready. But you're just going to have to take me the way I am right now, so sorry. Let's get started with the first comment. And then I've got, I'm going to get off track and talk about a few other things. I think just the nature of the comments is going to have me do that. First comment from Napdog. I guess that's how you say that. Now, he's referring to my review of the 2021 Honda Goldwing. Well, no bike is perfect. Um, and he disagrees with having a TFT dash with a digital speedometer. Okay, this is from the video that I did where I talked about my wish list of things for the 2022 Honda Goldwing. So I I'm, I'm made a mistake. I thought it was about my review of the 2021. Uh, actually, I agree with you. I'm not sure... I even said in the video, I'm not sure I even really want an all-digital dash. I think these cars that are coming out with these all-digital dashes like the Hyundais and the Genesis and some of, some of the other vehicles, what's going to happen in 10 years when that dash goes out and it's a three or $4,000 replacement and you basically can't drive the car without the dash? I, you know, I don't know how reliable these TFT uh, LED dashes are and how long they're going to last. So that's my biggest concern. With analog gauges, you don't really have to concern yourself too much with that. Now, this is from Gerald Clark, and Gerald says, very helpful video. He's talking about my installation video for the uh, Honda upper air deflectors. I have a question about the usefulness of these. Do you find them worth the time and money? Any experience with the lower air deflectors? Well, Gerald, I do think they're worth the time and money. I use my upper air deflectors all the time. I think they do a pretty good job of blocking the cold air in the winter. Keep the air off your hands. They're not quite as effective as the Baker Air Wings were on the previous generation Goldwing, but they do a respectable job. And they're very good at directing air to you in the summertime when you fold them in. They do kind of give you a little more airflow. So yes, I think they're well worth the money and pretty easy to install. Now, this question is pretty long. It's about my video I did on airbags and the Goldwing. And uh, his uh, name is Rainer. I assume it's a man. It could be a woman. Obviously a pilot because he has a picture of a private plane in his uh, avatar. I have the airbag model simply because we here in Switzerland, you only get airbag models. Don't ask me why. Um, 
I'm not going to read all through this. I changed the air filter according to your video. When it comes to the point where you remove the glove box, I just unscrew the rack where the airbag sits on. Then you can twist the whole thing out of the way without removing the airbag in order to change the filter. But it, when it comes time to remove the airbag for whatever reason, hopefully never, then you have to remove the fuel tank first. That's true. In fact, the Honda Service man man Manual, sorry, too much crown. The Honda Service Manual actually suggests that you remove the fuel tank just to change the air filter. But you, what he's saying is you don't have to do that. And I have not done a video on the airbag model for this reason. Well, for the reason I don't have an airbag model, I, they're hard to come by. So basically what he's saying is you just, now you want to remember, and he mentions this too, I believe, you just have to make sure you disconnect the negative battery cable anytime you're working on anything around the airbag or anything electrical because you don't want to accidentally uh, deploy that airbag. And so you just remove the negative cable of the battery. You remove that. What we wear on our bikes is the center pocket on a non-airbag model. There's a... Uh, mounting system for the airbag and it basically removes about the same way. So thank you Rainer for that information. Much appreciated. Now I have a question from <laughs> Tijani Tijani. I think I have to have a drink on that one. An exposed engine guard on the front to mount highway peg boards for riders with long legs. I think he's putting this on the wish list for the 2022. The horn button's disastrous. The seat is atrocious. Needs side edge support like 2017 wing, upper rear brake tail lights. Um, sounds like you might be happier with an earlier model gold wing. Uh, I do agree the seat is bad. I don't think it's atrocious, but it could be better. Um, the horn button, obviously, we've talked about that. An exposed engine guard on the front to mount highway pegs. You, there, there are third-party companies that have these. I personally think they all look ugly. I haven't seen one yet I like the looks of. I think they all look pretty disgusting. But if you demand more protection for tip-over protection and you want something to mount foot pegs to and you want that big engine guard out there, uh, I think uh, National Cycle makes one. There's one on eBay or Amazon from China, I've heard it's really junk, so don't buy that. If you're going to get one, get the one from National Cycle. Now, this is from Manfred Ottawa. Hi, Cruise Man. I'm a subscriber to your channel located in Germany, so I guess it's not Canada. Thanks for so many interesting and informative videos on the Honda Goldwing. I have a special answer, and I suspect this is interesting of other viewers on your channel. Some weeks ago, funny how the people in Germany speak better English and write better English than the people in America. It's very strange. Uh, owner of a 2021 Goldwing Tour DCT, when I drive with Honda's navigation, and at the same time I receive a call, then the navigation screen disappears during the call. That means the that means that during the call there is no chance to drive with navigation. Is this your experience too? Is this an error from Honda, or did I make a mistake in the operation? Uh, I do not find a way to see the navigation screen during a call. Now I assume he's not using CarPlay. I assume he's using the Honda navigation and the Honda telephone call system. Uh, honestly, I've never done it. I do not know the answer to that question. I'm sure there's somebody out there in our worldwide millions of subscribers and viewer audience that can answer that question. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and click the little bell icon too. You, you know the drill. You probably already have, but because but if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do it. It'll make me feel better. Um, I don't know the answer to this question. Um, somebody out there that uses the Honda navigation and the Honda phone calling system, please uh, put your answer to uh, Manfred down in the, of the comments below this video. Thank you. Okay, let's move on. JP says, hate the ads. Your upgrade, your upgrade ideas will raise the price so nobody could afford one. Okay. Nobody likes advertisements. Um, unfortunately, this is a business. 
Uh, this is not just, I don't just do this for fun. This takes up a considerable amount of time and money investment to make these videos. And the only way that we pay for this is with ads, unfortunately. Now there's other ways. I have my maintenance videos and those of you that have purchased my maintenance videos, that helps support this channel. Uh, we now have a sponsor, which is Bon Armor, uh, for uh, one of the videos we did recently. And that takes up 30, 45 seconds of time to do that ad, 60 seconds maybe. And yes, it's a pain to listen to ads, but um, I feel like, hopefully, I feel like the value you get from these videos is good enough that, you know, the ad, hopefully it's worth it. Now, as far as my upgrade idea is raising the price, my point in the video on the 2022 Goldwing was that the price is going to go up anyway due to inflation and that, that rather than new features driving a higher price, uh, the higher price from inflation could actually do the opposite. It could drive new features so that the uh, price would actually drive the necessity for adding new features. That was the whole point of the video I made. But thank you, JP, for the video. I hate ads too, but they are a necessary evil. And uh, just for that, we're going to take a short break, have a little ad, and I'll be right back. Have a drink. Go get your favorite adult beverage while this ad's running. Okay, welcome back to Crown and Comments. Do you have your favorite adult beverage at hand? If not, go get it. You should only watch this at night. And by the way, I'm in for the evening. I am not going to be riding the bike tonight. Don't ever, ever, ever drink alcohol and then go get on a motorcycle. That's really stupid. Okay, this question or comment is from, I'm not making this up, Slimy Puma. Didn't make that up. And very simple message. Political statements equals unsubscribe. Now, this was on my video about the 2022 Honda Goldwing, where I talked about inflation, uh, why um, I, I guess he considers that to be political. I, I don't know what's political about this. Even the Fed talks about inflation, about how it's you know growing. So the, these are not my numbers. These aren't my thoughts or my theories. This is, have you, have you been to the grocery store lately? Have you, I tried to buy a pot roast the other day. I swear to God. 30 freaking dollars for a pot roast. I used to buy them on sale for six or seven dollars. So am I the only one that thinks there's any inflation right now? Okay, so bottom line is, um, well, the bottom line is it's my channel. Okay, and if I want to say something that you consider to be political, I can't monitor and filter every single thing I say for fear of offending somebody because in today's world, no matter what you do, you're going to say something to offend someone. So if I offend you, I apologize for offending you. I don't apologize for my beliefs or my feelings. And anyway, that's that. That's why we're drinking Crown tonight instead of coffee. It's, oh, this is from Sally C., one of our female, I hope, female, you never know anymore. I mean, it may not be a female. It could be a man acting, wanting to be a woman. I don't know. It's a crazy freaking world. Okay, Sally, but Sally C., I'm, I'm going to go on the assumption. I'm old school. I'm going to assume it's a woman. And she says, hello, it's my honor to send this email to you. Well, thank you, Sally. It's my honor to receive it. I am Sally. We mainly sell automobile-related products. Oh, I know what this is. I get about five or six. I'm, I'm not kidding. I get five or six of these a day. A day. Something tells me Sally's Chinese or from China. Anyway, I'm Sally. We mainly sell automobile related products. We have experience in influencer marketing and now we are looking for some influencers to promote our products. I assume that means me. I'm writing to you to see if there are any chances to cooperate with you. I don't know if you're willing to have further contact with us. I believe that our products will also bring you more views. Gee, thanks. It will be a win-win cooperation between us. If you're interested and want to know more, blah, 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 best regards, Sally. I will say this one's better 
written better than most of them I get. Most of them, they're almost illegible. You can't read them. They're so poorly written. I get these every day. Sometimes they're from garage door opener companies. Sometimes they're headlight companies or fog light companies or headlight bulb companies. Every Chinese manufacturer that sells crap on Amazon wants me to do a video for them. They all have one thing in common. They all want me to do a video for them for free. And uh, I've decided, and we've talked, I was talking to Mick, Memphis Mike about this the other day. Um, I've decided I'm not, I'm not going to do it anymore. Okay? I'm just not going to do it. I don't have time. Um, I don't want to foist a bunch of crap on you that you don't want, that's no good, that's junk. <clears throat> and um, I've reviewed a couple of products before on situations like this back when I was a smaller channel. The products are usually junk, so I usually don't recommend them. So why am I wasting my time making a video? I'd rather make my, my a video, I'd rather take time making a video of a product that I think you're going to be interested in, that I think you're going to like, and I think you're going to, that I could feel good recommending to you. So anyway, I just thought you'd find that a little interesting. Uh, okay, this one's from Paul. Okay, Paul. Hey, just a suggestion for your videos or just send out a warning. My friend and I were at a stoplight the other day and all of a sudden he blew past me like a bullet and had a wreck. We both have DCTs. What happened is he had installed a throttle rest on his Kuryakin grip and without thinking he bumped the throttle rest with his hand. Fortunately, the bike took most of the damage and he walked away. So I'm, I'm assuming he's at the stoplight, he's in gear, his hand inadvertently hit this throttle uh, rest and the bike lurched out into the intersection and he hit a car or was hit by a car, I'm not sure which. Just a suggestion for your followers to remove the deadly device. Yes, he has cruise control, but well, you know what some people think. Thanks for the videos. Okay. Now, this is one thing about DCTs you have to really be careful with. And the same is true for grip puppies. Now, Don Smith, many of you know my friend Don, he put grip puppies on his DCT Goldwing, and he had a similar situation like this where I don't know if it was his glove or his hand, but because those grips were thicker, he inadvertently gave it the gas I don't know if he was at intersection or where he was. It didn't cause an accident. But you have to be very careful with the DCT, and you have to be very mindful that that motorcycle is always in gear. When you come to a stoplight or an intersection, I had a situation about a year ago where I pulled up to an intersection. I was in front of everybody. There were people behind me, but nobody ahead of me. And there were cars going by. I noticed a really large bolt laying in the road right next to the bike. Fortunately, I put the bike in neutral. I actually put the kickstand down, but I put my hand to steady myself on the throttle and I leaned down to pick up the bolt. And when I leaned down, I noticed the engine revved very because I actually was twisting the throttle to bend down. Had I been in gear, I would have been like, Paul's friend. I'd have been in the intersection and God only knows what would have happened. So you have to be very careful on a DCT and remember that you're always in gear when you're in an intersection. And if you have these throttle rests or they're kind of like a oh a pseudo cruise control. And even you know you you have cruise control on the bike, so you don't really need it. But the idea behind these was originally for bikes that did not have a cruise control. You could kind of rest your hand on this and it would keep the bike at a consistent speed. Get rid of it. Take it off. It's junk. Throw it away. Forget it. We don't want anybody. I can't afford to lose any subscribers, okay? Okay, I'm doing everything I can to get subscribers. I can't afford to lose any. I want you all to stay healthy. I want you to ride. I want you to enjoy riding as long as you can. Okay, here's another one. I got to have a drink. This is from Sean. Oh, here's the, here's the reason I broke out the crown. 
Sean says the more you continue with the science denier nonsense and claim your videos enhance my writing experience, they don't, in parentheses, the less likely I'll ever be to subscribe or like your videos, Chris. I do enjoy your videos, but how and why I'd appreciate my own gold wing or enjoy it more because of you is impossible to imagine. Sorry, but you're not that influential or important to me. The fact you're tuned into 8.20 a.m. in the DFW area leads me to believe it's likely you are the science denier and have taken it upon yourself to use the term in a smart-ass condescending manner. Ride safe, but count me out as a subscriber or as a subscribed follower. Sean, I must be pretty influential because I was able to get you to write an entire tome telling me uh, about how you're not going to subscribe. Some of you know what he's referring to. Sometimes at the beginning of my Moda vlogs, I'll say, I'd like you to subscribe to the channel. Um, the science shows that if you're a subscriber, you get much more enjoyment out of riding your motorcycle. So you want to make sure to follow the science and click the subscribe button down below. Don't, you know, don't be a science denier, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's God, it's called a joke. It's called sarcasm. Can, can you not understand? I'm kidding. It's, it's meant tongue in cheek. Oh my God. So this is why, this is why I, you've driven me to drink, Sean. You've driven me to fricking drink. Congratulations. You're the influencer because you influenced me to drink Crown instead of coffee and do this video. And just for your information, I get emails and messages every day from people who talk about how they love the videos. They get more enjoyment because they watch the videos. I have, I don't know, what, 34,000 subscribers right now? I think that's pretty good science. I think the science says that you do get something out of watching this channel and subscribing to this channel. That's my science. There's a hell of a lot more science to suggest that people get more, they get some enjoyment out of this channel than there is to suggest that these, never mind, I can't say it. Serenity now, serenity now. <laughs> okay, this is about Cena Bluetooth about my recent video where I talk about not buying the Cena Spider. If the headset has no Bluetooth connectivity and the Goldwing connects via Bluetooth, how can it be, how can pairing be expected to happen? Maybe I misunderstood something. This is from Steve Ravel. I mean, sorry, Stu Ravel. Um, okay, Stu, I probably did not do a very good job of explaining this. The headset does have a Bluetooth chip. It will connect via Bluetooth to a mobile phone, but it's just, it does not have the Bluetooth capability to communicate between headsets. So it, it can connect via Bluetooth to your mobile phone or in theory, your Goldwing, which it doesn't work, or to a GPS on a second channel. So it has these two Bluetooth channels for audio input but it does not have a Bluetooth communication between headsets. That's the difference. I should have done a better job explaining that. Thanks for bringing that up. Because I can see where that's confusing. After your... Hi, Chris. This is from Elaine Flute... I'm, I'm going to really screw this one up. Flutier? Flut, Flutier. I'm just going to go with Flutier. Hello, Chris. Does anybody name Smith anymore, besides my friend Don? Does anybody just have a name I can pronounce? Anyway, Elaine. I assume you pronounce it Elaine. It may be Alan. I don't know. After your review, I bought an ultimate seat for my 2021 Goldwing DCT tour with airbag. Before I buy, Ultimate told me their heated seat was... Oh, this is an important message everybody needs to listen to. Their heated seat was exactly the same as the OEM one. I'm very happy with the comfort of both the seat and the driver backrest. However, however, after a while, I noticed I lost the start-stop feature of the bike. He may be in Canada or Europe, and 
uh, non-U.S. motorcycles all come from the factory with this start-stop. I hate it. I hate it. Like some cars do where you come to an intersection and the engine dies. And then when you hit the uh, throttle or the accelerator, it starts the engine automatically. I hate that. But Goldwings do come with that feature on non-U.S. models. Thank God they didn't put that on the U.S. models. Anyway, I noticed that I lost the start-stop feature of the bike. To me, it's a bug, not a feature, but that's okay. After a few checks at the Honda dealer, I realized that the ultimate seat was the reason of the missing feature because it does not contain the driver sensor used by the start-stop function. Basically, he goes on to say, does this also affect the airbag operation? If the driver sensor is not functioning and you have an airbag model and you have an ultimate seat, does your airbag become inoperative or not operate according to Honda's specs? That is a very, very good question. And I don't know the answer to it. This is a question that only Ultimate can, can answer. It never occurred to me that there was even such a thing as a driver sensor built into the seat or into that harness. Apparently, the Ultimate, uh, you know, the heater connector that for the heated seat, that connector apparently does not have this sensor. So if anybody out there knows the answer to this, I would appreciate you putting it in the comments because I honestly don't know the answer to this. And excellent question, Alan. I appreciate it. Or Alan, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. I apologize. I'm from Texas. You have to forgive me. We're Hicks. Okay. Uh, by the way, I'll be purchasing your 2018 plus maintenance. This is from Steve Treadle. Tr Tr uh, I'll be purchasing the videos this coming week. Once I have purchased these, am I correct that I can download, view them from all of my devices? It's a good question, a fair question, and the answer is yes. They are for your personal use only. You, as long as you don't distribute these to anyone else for their viewing pleasure, um, when you purchase my maintenance videos, you can download them to your computer, you can download them to your iPhone, you can view them from your iPhone via streaming, you can view them on your computer streaming, you can view them on your iPad streaming. There's no restriction on you viewing the videos. The only thing I ask, and that would be a violation of the copyright, would be if you were to allow someone else to view them or if you were to in any way distribute or share or loan or give or sell these to someone else. That you can't do. But as far as your devices, knock yourself out. Steve, watch them on anything you want as much as you want. I hope you get value from them and I hope this save you money. Now we have a message about Wingding. Why don't you volunteer your time for free at Wingding to help Goldwing riders or make the event better. Seems like you don't like trikes as well. You're knocking Wingding about their vendors, yet you make a video about painting cabinets and a home paint sprayer. And this is from Rangear498. Um, as I've said in one of my motor vlogs, or maybe more than one, I'd be more than willing to go to Wingding. Uh, and donate my time to help Goldwing riders. Uh, that's not the problem. The problem is they haven't invited me, and they don't give me or any other of the YouTubers a forum for which to help other people. Um, as far as I'm not knocking the vendors, I don't think it's smart for Wingding to have a bunch of bed and pillow manufacturers and and jewelry and this kind of crap when people are there to shop for motorcycle products. I just don't think it's smart business for them. I don't think it serves their community. Uh, that's just my opinion. And as far as me making video about painting cabinets and a home paint sprayer, um, yeah, that, that you might have a point there. 
but it was part of my garage renovation project, which does kind of tie into my gold wing. That's how I justified it or rationalized it, is it was all part of this um, garage renovation project. And so um, I did not have good luck with the Wagner paint sprayer, but you know, just don't watch the video. If you don't like it and you don't think that pertains to you, yes, you know, you have the choice. You don't have to watch that video. So anyway, that that's it. Those are my those are my uh, my comments and my messages for this month. Um, please put more comments down below uh, if you want to ensure that your message or your comment or your email gets red in the next coffee and comments or crown and comments depending on which depending on how rough they are um make sure you insult me if you insult me you'll probably get on no i shouldn't say that oh god now i've opened the door i'm an idiot anyway um thanks for joining me today if you like this video please give it a thumbs up it does help with my rankings i appreciate it um I'm probably in Greece right now on a cruise ship and I have held this video to release it while I'm gone so you have something to watch so you don't forget me. So anyway, I will see you when I get back. More motor vlogs, more product reviews. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you on the next. I didn't make it to the bottom. No courage. Oh well, I'll work on it after I turn off the video camera. See you guys later.